Welcome to the Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson podcast, the podcast where we head down the road of the supernatural and beyond. So sit back and hold on as we take a ride together to what lies in the unknown and beyond the veil. Today we have Brittany Hudson with Meditating Mama. Brittany has been a practitioner of mindfulness meditation for almost 30 years. She has classes in the San Diego area. And now your host, Daniel Jackson. Hello and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson. Me, I'm your host. And today we have uh, we have the meditation mama. We have Brittany Hudson. Hi, Brittany. How are you? Hi, and thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you on here. When we put up our video, I will put up all the links that uh, that you have and that will talk about you. But I want you to talk about you. So uh, tell my audience what it is uh, you do. And, uh, and uh, the most important part is, uh, uh, especially with what you do, how and why did you get into doing what you're doing? Okay, so how and why? So I... Yeah, Probably from from my longest memory, um, experienced anxiety when I was about seven years old. But if I was wow. experiencing it before that, I just don't recall it because we don't remember a lot of the stuff from those those younger years before five years old. Why were you experiencing and, that when you were seven? Um, my parents got divorced, and um, oh and. I, I think I've always been, especially my family has said this, just kind of prone to anxious emotions and feeling anxious over situations. And it was an on and off thing. It wasn't like every day, all the time, sure. but it was there and it carried on and it carried on and it kind of got worse in the teenage years, the teenage wow. years. Oh, the teenage years. <laughs> really? I mean... Okay. Well, what well, what what do you think uh, caused that in the teenage years? Just I mean, just regular teenage crap. Um, I think just the pressures of high school, um, puberty, hormones, those fun things, and also, I um, I was just barely sixteen when my dad passed away from cancer. So that wow. affected me really bad. Sure. That that really really. Uh, oftentimes, grief leads sense into anxiety. Yeah, that whole sense so of we loss. Have, yeah. yeah, we have the grief tied into um, the anxiety, you know, especially when you're young and uh, losing a parent yeah, at a young age. We are we are taught to have that grief. Well, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so when I was around seventeen. Um, we got these new next door neighbors. This was me growing up in Los Angeles. And the wife was a yoga and meditation teacher. And, and we were friendly with the neighbors. She knew what I was experiencing and going through. And she said, why don't you come and take a class and, and see how it makes you feel. Just, just, you know, be a little open to it. And I was like, anything to feel better because nobody yeah. enjoys feeling anxious, feeling no. stressed, feeling worried, feeling fearful. That's not fun. Mm -hmm. You want to you want to do anything to to calm it, to relieve it, to stop it. So I took her class, and it was a life changer. And I said, "This is for me." So, um, like I said, I was around seventeen at the time. At eighteen, I I graduated. I moved to San Diego, where I currently live now, and I looked for another teacher. I said, "I want to keep doing this, but I need I need a teacher. I need a guide. I." need a guru, whatever you call it. And sure. um, I ended up finding um, a teacher here in San Diego, sat with him and practiced with him for 17 years. Oh my goodness. Yes. And then um, decided to branch out on my own. And in 2014, created Meditating Mama. So to help others who have been where I have been. To, so that there's a so I can relate. It's not that I've never experienced fear, panic, anxiety, and so on, and didn't know what to do, and then found a way to relieve it and handle it and deal with it. So so I've been there, but I'm not there 
anymore because I created, I, I found teachers who helped me create a practice of mindfulness, a practice of meditation. And I carried on with it and I carried on with my practice and I carried on with my learning. And now I give, bring it to others. So people, it's basically saying nobody has to suffer in any way being uncomfortable with unpleasant emotions because I, I was there and I was able to, to get out of that suffering and everybody else can too. And I'm, I'm here to be that teacher, to be that guide, to be that relief, to be that resource. Yeah. There, and there must be. So when myself, when I started meditating, um, there wasn't, I, I looked online. I, when I looked online, I saw some videos, uh, I saw guided meditation. I can't do guided meditation. I'm 55 and just can't picture myself climbing up a tree or a set of stairs because I don't want to do it in the daytime. Uh, but uh, so uh, I just had to kind of find my own way of doing things. Uh, and my the way that I would uh, clear my mind out for that is I would sit in a dark room and um, get in a comfortable position. Uh, I don't do the whole um thing. Uh, and I would just say, uh, yeah, because that's crazy stuff. And uh, but I would uh, I would say the word empty out loud maybe ten times, and then I would say it in my mind ten times to clear my mind up. Uh, but what took place after that? It would take me probably 30, 30 minutes or forty five minutes to actually get completely relaxed, and then you know things just started coming in. Uh, but uh, but I never thought for you saying that you were with a teacher and practicing for 17 years. I mean, I never thought that I would have to practice it or, or anything. I just, I just tried to do it. Uh, uh, but since then it has changed then too. I, I went, um, my wife and I, uh, she signed me up for to get a massage. And so I went and got the massage. And as I laid down on the table, uh, the masseuse started playing some music and it was uh, binaural beats. And mm -hmm. when, she, when she did that, I mean, literally closed my eyes and I was in. And I was like, whoa. Now with my meditation, the way that I do it, um, uh, I don't know if I explained this to you, but my my profession is I'm a, a medium. I'm, I'm a spirit medium. And mm -hmm. I, I see spirit never turns off. I see them day and night. Uh, so when I was in there laying down, uh, as soon as I closed my eyes and she turned that music on, I started seeing all kinds of stuff. And I was like, but I'm able to actually uh, speak during it. Uh, so I'm uh, basically coherently awake still, uh, but I'm able to speak because I talk to my guides and I see them. And uh, when I was closing my eyes at this thing, I saw them right away. And I was like, wow, man, that was crazy. Uh, and then I can talk to them and they talk back to me. And uh, I get answers. They touch my face for yes and no answers, but they also put messages in my mind. And uh, my mind is crazy now. I'm only like 20% me when I walk around during the day and the other 80% is them. I got stuff going on. So, uh, um, but you saying you, you practiced this for 17 years. What did you do for that 17 years that you had to? Uh, well, when, when I call meditation a practice, I just mean you do it. Okay. You do it every day. And then sometimes you go and sit with your teacher. Okay. When it's available. And so people, some people can say, oh, I meditate, but they meditate maybe once a week or once a month or yeah. here and there when it's convenient, or when they're not feeling right. And so when I say practicing for 17 years, I was um, continuing to go to his classes. And, and show up to the house where he was guiding the meditations. It was, it was guided, it was semi-guided, and he was doing the guiding. 
it was more of a breathing guidance than let's visualize trees and stairs and paths and oceans and palm trees and whatnot. It was, um, it was just a guided meditation of be with your breathing. And right. when you've noticed that you judged it from your breathing, come back to your breathing. Right. And, and then, so you pretty much said, okay, uh, this time of day or whatever time of day it is, you made a point that that's exactly what you're going to do and nothing else is going to take the place of that. That's what you're going to do. Yes. And so it's, it's different when you are in person with your teacher, getting the guidance, learning different types of meditation, being guided into different types of meditation than when you're just kind of at home, maybe using an app or just doing a quiet meditation on your own where you just sit in silence uh, maybe set a timer for a bit, or if you don't need a timer because you have all the time in the world, you just sit with your eyes closed and be with your breathing and carry on and see what happens. And when you feel like you're done, you're done. And so that's why I say I sat with him. I practiced with him for 17 years, sometimes seeing him once a week, sometimes seeing him twice a month. But he he is what I would call he was my teacher. Because it's kind of like uh, the analogy I'm going to use is like having a trainer. So yes. if you have, you're exercising, you have a trainer, and you go to the trainer, the trainer is going to make sure that, okay, we do everything we need to do and follow through. Whereas if you don't, you go, ah, I'm not going to go to the trainer. I'm just going to go to the gym. Right. Oh, hey, look up at the counter. They got pizza. And, oh, I'm going to get a couple of Hershey Kisses while I'm up there. And right. then uh, uh, tootle around on a couple of machines and go, oh, I broke a sweat going home. But also what I didn't mention is that I was really, I was relatively young when I started with him. I was 21 when I started with him and 38 when wow. I completed. Wow. So I was transforming and growing and with him. So as I was, you know, there's a big difference between a 21 year old and a 38 year old. Oh, absolutely. And becoming a mother and all that sort of stuff. And <laughs> so I, I was, growing with him i mean he he has even said i feel like i'm i'm your uncle because i've watched you grow sure. you know from sure. this young 21 year old coming in and saying you know i want to i want to be part of a meditation group to 38 39 i'm i'm going to be a teacher did you do you still keep in contact with him or see him still um not very much anymore okay. because i've kind of <laughs> um and I've left teachers before to seek other things, okay. to, to grow in other places, to broaden my horizons and my learning, because everybody has a gift to give, and yeah. you just want to give other... I, I love learning from all sorts of different uh, teachers all over the world. Have you ever you walked in and sat down with a teacher, and then after the session said, what the hell is this guy doing? He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Um, I, I, uh, I can sometimes be one and done. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Whether yeah. it's in person or online or through an app or whatever it might be. And it could simply just be that, um, my energy didn't mix with them Sure. or I have a tendency to not prefer music. I want just the voice. Okay. If it's going to be a guided meditation, um, I can be picky sometimes and not Ooh, prefer an accent or if the woman's voice is kind of high pitched and mousy, I'm just not into that. And or maybe so, when she, when they are doing the meditation, uh, they're chewing a piece of gum and gum. <laughs> you know, so, you know, the certain styles are, are for me and certain styles are not for me. And that's what I tell my clients when they come to me and we do a session together, then I send them off you know, into the world. And I say, experiment, you know, see what you like and see what you don't like. You might not like guided. You might just want to sit silent. You might want to sit with music instead. You might want to chant. You might want to chant out loud or chant mentally. There's so many different things out there. Try it all, experiment, see what resonates with you. You might want to take off your clothes and run around a room. But <laughs> dude, don't do it in front of me because I don't want to see it. Because, yeah. Because, so, yeah, that, there's... And you're you're exactly right. When I tell everybody with with everything, uh, when I do readings for them, 
you're not going to know what you like unless you go out there and experience your life. And because yeah. when they come to me for a reading, I always tell them, you know, I'm not your I'm not your personal fortune teller. You, right. I, I can't tell you everything that's going to happen to you within your life before you've lived it, because then you're not going to have a chance to experience it. And in order to find out what you like, you have to experience things. It's it's the world is about two, making two decisions: what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, just stop doing it. But you're not going to know what doesn't work for you unless you try it. Exactly. And and I in in my twenties, I did. Uh, sit with uh, a female teacher for about six years. And then I was like, okay, I've had my fill and I carried on. And then 20 years later, I went back and I was like, "Mm -mm, no, (laughs) at least I tried. Yeah. So you you had, you had pretty much, uh, do you think at that point you had uh, accelerated yourself? You were, you were beyond what she was teaching you? Um, I just want to say outgrown. I think okay. outgrown is a good word uh, or words. And, um, but I wouldn't have known that if I didn't take the opportunity to go back. And I didn't just go right. back once and say, oh, no, no, no. I went back multiple times to really make sure that it was, that, I, well. that I had maybe outgrown it or it just wasn't for me or I wasn't feeling it or resonating with it. And, or, um, or, or and that's okay. Or, or bitches be crazy, stuff, stuff, stuff like that, because <laughs> you know? they are sometimes. But uh, but again, you're not going to know until you, you know, you revisited it and you tried it again and it just didn't work for you. Exactly. And there's so many teachers out there and apps and YouTube and everything that you can experience it all and check it all out. Did you ever come in contact with anybody who sits there and goes, oh, no. Okay, good. No, you. no, and that's not that's not my jive either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like think that that, that's the stereotypical. You watch something on TV, and they sit in lotus with their hands on their knees, and you know their fingers pinched, and and they're oming, yeah. and I'm just like, you know, that's just kind of not really it. Yeah, but yeah it the whole, for you, great. I, I can't sit in an Indian position. Never been able to. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I just, I can't, and, and now I really can't because, uh, I had a, um, a work accident years ago, like 14 years ago, and I had a pallet of frozen chicken fall on top of me. Now I'm huge to my lower back. So I just cannot, I I ride motorcycles and there's certain motorcycles I can't ride because I can't get my leg over it. So, and I tried tried to go to a, uh, a yoga class, um, uh, with a friend of mine who I was in a group of mediums with, and uh, I, I can't bend that way. I just can't. It's not possible. Even she tried to move my leg, and she was like, "Oh, what's going on here?" I was like, "I'm fused in my lower back." She's like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, I usually when I'm when I'm guiding a meditation, when I'm having a client come in, or I'm just recording a guided meditation to post on, you know, apps or websites or whatever. You know, I usually say seated position or laying down position. You want to be able to suit everybody. Most people can sit in a chair, but maybe they can't sit in a chair for a long period of time. Right. Everybody can lay down and be pretty comfortable. So you say you don't like to use the music. Is there anything you like to do to uh, uh, beforehand that you'd like to try to set the mood for that? I mean, do you, do I'm a you- breather. I'm all about breathing and breathing technique. And using breathing for focus and using breathing for grounding and using breathing to pull yourself into the present moment. It's a breathing meditation that I teach. I, I myself enjoy breathing because if I didn't, I mean, wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's always with you. So right, you it's been- always with me. Yeah, just like sometimes this shirt is always with me. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I got jokes. Uh, do you use anything like, um, I don't know, like, some people like to burn incense, anything like that, or or you just want a nice calm room. You know, I I pulled away from using oils and um and scents and incense because some people are sensitive to it and it doesn't work sure. well with them. Sure. And uh, so I can't just assume that that incense is going to work for this person or this oil or candle or whatever because you don't know what people's sensitivities are. You right. don't know 
if a scent triggers something happy or sad or, you know, angry or upsetting. So I, I just use, I just bring myself, I show up with me and my wisdom and my breathing techniques and my guidance. And um, I, I like to allow for the client to comfortable. So most of the time we're seated, like in a chair with back support, because most of us are not well practiced at sitting without back support. And we don't want the uncomfortable back to become a, another distraction. Right. So we're, we're sitting supported by the chair and yeah. our back is supported. It also allows our feet to be grounded flat on the floor. Because if you have a back pain, that's all you're thinking about. You can't. Correct. Yeah. And as you know, what you focus on grows. So if you're like, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, then the pain right. gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And then, then you're done. You're, have you ever had, uh, like, uh, like hypnotists talk about, have you ever had uh, someone who just can't go under? No. Because, like I said, I guide I guide the meditation. I'm not talking the whole time. There are times when I'm quiet and we have some quiet time so they could do the meditation without me and do it on their own. But after all these years, I've never had anybody at the end say, it just didn't happen for me. Right. Bye. <laughs> wow, well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, at least, uh, <laughs> at least you're not having that because then but they, got, they at least got something out of it. Yeah. You know, because we're, we're building an awareness with uh, mindfulness meditation because awareness is just another word for mindfulness is just another word for awareness. And that's what, that's what I'm saying. We're just building an awareness to be with our breathing. And because how often are we paying attention to our breath? Probably right. never. Never. We're breathing all day long, not paying attention to it unless we're out of breath or we've choked on our water or whatever. And we're like, okay, breathe, breathe, breathe. But then other than that, we're breathing all day long and we're not paying attention to it. Or unless somebody comes up to you and says, you need a mint. <laughs> exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Just, just Then you're like, okay, I'll just breathe through my nose. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it doesn't work. You got to breathe through your mouth for the, for, for the meditation. Have you ever, have you experienced anyone yet who has been uh, under your, your tutelage, uh, has gone on and become a teacher themselves? Um, I'm, I'm working on that. Yes, I have. Um, I did, gosh, I'm trying to remember. It was in 2019 that, uh, a lady that was attending a regular meditation class that I was offering, uh, come to me and say, I'd like to be a teacher like you. And we, we went through a teacher training, but it wasn't something that I'd really planned on. Now I do offer that through my Meditating Mama business, which is teacher training to be either a mindfulness meditation teacher, but I'm also a certified mindfulness for kids teacher, working oh, with awesome. kids 5 through 11. And I do teacher training for that as well. Where do you go do that at? I mean, do you have uh, parents bring their kids in or do you go into like the school system and do that? So before COVID, yes but not since. Okay. Now in July of 2020, I have a house with a nice backyard. So I moved all classes to my backyard so we could be outside, be distance and take off the mask. Right. Right. Because that mask is good. Because from... that mask interrupts everything. Yeah, it does. It interrupts life completely. And, you know, yeah, it, it's also, what do they call it? I call the mask, uh, oh, a false sense of security. So, uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, that's BS right there. So that, so the kids, is is that something that's not happening right now? or? Oh, you... no, no, it's happening. It's oh, just you... happening outside in my backyard. Oh, so that's great. So, I yes. mean. Yes. And uh, you, uh, you live in, uh, uh, I guess that would be Southern California? Yeah, so I'm in San Diego where we pretty much have beautiful weather 24-7 right. and 365 so I can do stuff outside. What's that song? It never rains in Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> Although we had pouring rain last night and early this morning. Did you? Oh, sorry to hear I that. I know. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to handle the rain. I don't really know how to handle the rain here. My wife and I just moved uh, two and a half months ago from Delaware 
and we traveled all the way across uh, the United States to uh, uh, Southern Arizona. Oh, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm 12 miles uh, north of the Mexican border. We go to this town down the road and you can actually see the border wall. Uh, but uh, the one thing we do have around here is uh, great tacos and chili. So uh, I'm okay with that. But, but they have a monsoon season here uh, that starts in uh, June and goes all the way through to September, like what would we would consider summer back east. And uh, and they say it'll just pour and pour and pour for like an hour, and then it'll just go away. They actually have, everywhere around here, there's all these big, big giant deep gullies everywhere. Uh, through our streets, there's these big metal grates and gullies everywhere for, to, uh, to get the, you have these stone dry bed things in everybody's yards to guide the water out of your yard into the oh, street. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty strange here, our, but the uh, best part about it is, is uh, I came from nowhere and everything is green and grass and uh, there's no grass here to cut. So uh, our, our, our lawn is completely rocked, which is awesome. So, uh, cause I don't want to cut the grass because that's, that, that stuff sucks. So, uh, so you've been doing this for how long now? About 30 years? Um, the practice in general, 30 years, but teaching through my with my business meditating mama for eight. Oh, okay and yeah. uh so do you have to because of that i guess you would you would have to get a, a regular business license to do that as well and oh yeah i have all the insurance and the business license right all that the website i'm also on facebook i mean because you know not that anybody's going to get uh uh have an accident breathing uh but uh but but you never know because you know you know people are these days they want to they want to blame something on somebody so <laughs> you know, take, take better safe than sorry yeah so uh, and is there any uh, pre prerequisites that people have to have or uh, in order to take your class or 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 to to do this with you. No, because I I like to put a lot of focus on meditation for beginners. Right. right. And so if you've if you've never meditated a day in your life or if you used to do it and then you got out of it and now you want to get back into it, whatever your situation is, uh, there's no prerequisites. Okay. And you're so do you have uh, do you have uh, beginners, intermediate and then advanced classes as well? I do. But I, I mostly get uh, the beginners right. and so and the intermediate uh, people coming to my class or asking for a private class. You know, then we have the kids. And so which is really fun. What do you do to um, to reassure them that they will be able to do this? I find people come out when I do readings for people or when I'm just talking to them, I always tell them. Uh, to get the key to everything, the key to getting messages from spirit, the key to to finding out things about yourself that you would never find out before is meditation. And whenever I tell people that, they say, well, I tried it, but I, I don't, I just can't do it. I can't. Do, and I tell them, well, you know, again, with meditation, what you're doing is clearing out your mind. In order to mm -hmm. get clear messages, you have to have a clear mind. And you have, and they're usually these people who are, their mind is racing 100 miles an hour. And I said, well, if you would do this on a regular basis, you wouldn't have to be having a mind that raced 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. So, so what is it, is there anything that you, um, that um, you can help them with to, to help them feel more at ease or help them to, to back up the, uh, the thought of, you know, if you if you do this and this and this and this, this is going to help you. Is there anything that you do with that? Yeah. So most people, I think, like like we had said, look at meditation as I have to sit in lotus and om and you know do all these different things, and they're not really understanding that it could be something as simple as sitting in a chair and closing your eyes and being with your breathing. Right. And um. When, when I first am working with people, I always do a, a talk first. I don't just sit them down and say, okay, close your eyes. We're going to meditate. Right. You know, I explain what meditation is. I explain what mindfulness is and, and how it works and why, why it works and what meditation is. 
And that really all we're doing is spending a little bit of time being aware of our breathing. That's all we're doing. Yeah. Breathing. Because we breathe all day long without paying attention to it. So let's just sit, pay attention to our breathing. Notice that when we drift off to thinking or wondering or planning or whatever it might be, that we're going to do that too. And that's very normal because we're trained to think and think and go, go, go and monkey mind and a thousand thoughts and one thought domino effects into a whole bunch of other thoughts. And that's really normal too. And you're going to experience that as well. But it's also happening in the moment. The thinking's happening in the moment. The sounds are happening in the moment. The sensations are happening in the moment. The emotions are happening in the moment. And you're just noticing them and being aware of them where before you were not. And so it's just an experience of present moment breathing and noticing everything that's going on in that present moment, but attempting to let go of the whatever the distractions are so that yeah. you can come back to the breathing. And it is going to be a series of, I'm with my breathing, I'm with my distractions. I let go and I come back to my breathing. And now I'm with my breathing and now I'm with my distractions. And that's totally okay. Because at the end, when we're all finished, they go, wow, I certainly do think a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they don't realize it, correct? Yeah. And I said, that's the awareness. That's the awareness. And so we could look at a meditation as I'm building this awareness of I'm with my breathing. I'm not with my breathing so I can br come back. Because when you are aware of the thinking, the planning, the wondering, what have you, that's when you can say, well, I'll let that go by not bringing my focus to it and returning my focus back to my inhale and my exhale. Have you ever had anyone show up to your class and just before they come into your class, they're outside smoking a cigarette and hacking up a lung again, you've got to tell them, oh, we're going to be working on breathing today. And they're looking at you like, oh. <laughs> that's so, like, so like, not oh. that I know of. Uh, not, that I, not that I know that they that not that I know of if it happens I, you, you look at them and I'm like now I got to meditate twice just to get you out of my mind oh, <laughs> right. yeah that, you that know was, that something that you and I were talking about before we met when we were messaging back and forth was you asked me the spirit send messages through me when I'm doing a meditation mm -hmm. and I said I yeah I was about to get to that Okay, I jumped ahead of you. No, go right ahead. I'm glad you brought <laughs> it up. So when I'm guiding or teaching or doing anything, wh whether it's the kids or I'm doing a teacher training or um, I'm doing a semi-guided meditation with a group or in one person, things that come through my mouth, they're not mine. Like, <laughs> I know that was not me. It's channeled. And, but it, com it comes through and it comes out of my mouth. And I think, wow, that was- Who the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to say that again. You know, so it's, sometimes it's not me. And I know yeah. for sure that whatever came out of my mouth, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guiding, I'm speaking, I'm teaching. Yeah. That wasn't, that didn't come from me. And it's brilliant and yeah. I like it. And I'm gonna use it again. And it's like somebody sharing an idea with me, or I listen to other people's meditations and I go, oh, that's clever. You know, I'm going to use that. And, you know, I like that idea and I like that word and I like that phrase. So you're always pulling from other people's um, thoughts and ideas, whether they are here or in the spirit world. Yeah, whenever, but I still remember the very first time when I, when I really got in and then a me message came through uh but the way that the, the message came through was i heard a voice come in and then my mind i didn't say it but my mind said something back and there was a conversation going on for like a couple minutes and then i was just sitting there and i was all of a sudden i just kind of like came out and was like was i just talking to somebody who was that what was that all about but then at that point, I was like, shit, I'm out. Let me try to get back in, but I just could not get back <laughs> in. So I said, okay, I'll try it tomorrow. Now it just happens on a basis where 
I'm aware of it. And I'm uh, absolutely aware of it. Have you ever had that experience where something did come out of your mouth and then you just kind of like totally missed it because you're like, I got to write that down. Oh, shit. What was it? <laughs> you know, no, because happened? I'm so much in my zone. Right. I you're so in your zone. Yeah. I'm well practiced to not get out of my zone when I'm teaching because that doesn't benefit anybody. Right. And, you know, whether it's me or my student, my client, what have you, I, I become aware of it while I'm in the zone of guiding. Right. And I can just say to myself, that's neat, like mentally. And then I'm yeah. right back into it. Like, oh, that's neat. Boom. I get messages all the time. Uh, they show me things. I see all kinds of stuff. They bring me messages where it just, it, out of nowhere, it just comes up. And it shows it like a video form, like in video, and and sometimes in cartoons. Uh, like they showed me one time, uh, they showed me on my bicycle that I have out in my garage, riding my bicycle around. And I, and so I said to them, "Do you want me to ride my bicycle more?" And then I got a, a yes answer because they're touching me frequently all the time, uh, never stops. And um, and they said, "Yeah." And I said like exercise and yeah and then uh, so i i did that and ended up losing like 15 pounds uh because they just kept telling me to do it so but but when i talk to people about that i always tell them that's just for me that doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen for you but you're not going to find out what happens for you unless you try this correct mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i i try to uh I try to uh, encourage it as much as I can. I always just tell them, like I said, you know, meditation is the key to pretty much everything. You're going to find out more about yourself than you ever would any Absolutely. other way, you know. So, and I and I try to uh, just promote it as much as I can wherever I go and whatever I do. Is there uh, some type of way? I mean, other than just having your classes, uh, do, does promotion of what you do? Does it work better for you uh, with an outside source, like doing it online, or does it? Or do you get more clients from uh, just word of mouth? Uh, it's both, and um, I also pretty recently it was it was in January started recording a lot of my meditations and putting them on a on a, a particular meditation app. Am I allowed to say it? You can say whatever you want to. Oh, like. it's called Insight Timer. So there's an okay. app. Yeah, yeah. Free, that, an app out there called Insight Timer. I have guided meditations on there. Um, that's a way to get a hold of my meditations 24 7 because I'm not awake. I have to sleep. I have to do life as well. Yeah, and we all got to have a cheeseburger. Come on. <laughs> Hello, I'm Daniel Jackson, also known as Spirit Medium Daniel. I have a new book out on Amazon titled. Daniel Jackson, The New Beginning, My Awakening as a Spirit Medium. It's my story of becoming a medium in chronological order of how it happened for me. There are also 25 channeled messages from my spirit guides of what God wants us to know. You can find it there on Amazon by putting in the search bar, Daniel Jackson, The New Beginning. It is on paperback and ebook. So, I mean, I have my website, which just lets people know about me and know about my classes, and people can send me an email through there or call me through there. Um, I have a Facebook page. So everything's Meditating Mama, and that's how I can get clients from really all over, because Facebook is all over. Anybody could get onto a computer and go onto a website. We have Zoom, like we're doing right now. Yeah. We have phones. Boom, we have FaceTime and we have all these different things so that we can connect and look at each other. And um, so, right. yeah, so social media and laptops and phones and computers, although sometimes they are this necessary evil, they right. can allow us to be more connected in a good way. Yeah, and, and Zoom itself has come a long way, too, for like, the very beginning, back in 2020, when teachers were trying to use Zoom, they were having a lot of problems. But they've really, it's really, they've really upped the game because of that, and it makes it so much easier for everyone to get together. You know, you can have multiple 
people inside of a room and, and be doing all these things together, which is which really helps. But uh, well, that's a good thing. I mean, at least uh, so. Yeah, and I, whatever websites uh, uh, that you use, yeah, absolutely talk about them because you know uh, that's the only way people. Uh, I've never heard of that website before, and, and that's awesome. So they can. The app is Insight, and then the next word is Timer. Um, it's it's a great free meditation app because you can get very specific to what you want. You can say, I want a gratitude meditation. I want it to be less than five minutes. I want it to have music. I want it to be guided. I want it to be guided by a woman. I mean, you can get so detailed with it. And then you just hit enter and boom, they all show up with ratings. And then you can say, oh, this one got a good rating. So maybe I'll listen to that one. And always remember, if you listen to it for 30 seconds and you're like, no way, man, then you just exit out of that one and try the next one. Yeah, that one with women would probably work with me because it seems like my whole life's been guided by women. Oh. <laughs> Not always in a good way, but, you know, hey, you know, well, uh, when, when men you like were... to think they rule the world, but they don't. Women do. So when when you were going to back, going back to the subject of people who are hesitant to start the meditation, yeah. Uh, when I first started meditating, Mama, people were coming to me and saying, you know, I really want to get into meditation, but I don't have any time. And I said, well, what about 60 seconds? And nobody really could believe that in 60 seconds you could get calm and grounded. Right. And so I, I can't say I created this because everything's out there. We're just grabbing it and borrowing it. Yeah, we all, we all take something from somebody else. Like right. We, sure. And it was it's just this simple meditation of putting a hand on your belly and putting a hand on your chest and being with your breathing, using your hands to feel the sensations of breathing. Because when you breathe, your belly or your chest rises and falls. You're using your hands to feel the sensations of breathing. And then we're taking a moment to name our breathing mentally. So if you close your eyes and every time you breathe in, you mentally say breathe in. And every time you breathe out, you mentally say breathe out and you focus on sensations of breathing and naming breathing, you can do that for 60 seconds. I've done it. I've seen it with people who have never meditated a day in their life. I show them how to do it. I'm sitting right in front of them. I got my watch on 60 seconds. Then I ring the bell to say your 60 seconds is over. How do you feel? And they are feeling delicious. Delicious. I like that. <laughs> That's a good way. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, because that uh, that that relaxed feeling, most people don't really get to ex experience that total relaxed feeling beyond falling asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, when I look up uh, meditation music or for two, YouTube, uh, what I do is I, I I start going down a list and I say I ask my guides. I say, is this one I want? And they say, no. Is this one? No. This one? Yeah. Because when I get a a no answer it feels like a tears running down my face. When I got a yes answer, I get these touches across my forehead. It feels like blood dripping across my forehead. So, uh, so, and I'll go, and I'll go. This one, yes, okay, because uh, I always go past the one that says uh, sleeping. Because I don't want to go to sleep. I want to meditate. So, um, and then what I do is I, I Bluetooth it to my little Bluetooth speaker, and I put that in the corner of the room. That's what, that way when when the, the music comes out, I don't play it too loud because I don't really want the music itself. I want the sound and vibration from it. I want that from it. And then I put it in the corner of the room and that way it'll resonate throughout the whole room, which will completely, you know, go all over me as well, uh, the, the vibration. And then that's, I'm in, you know, so, but, uh, but finding for me, the right meditation music takes a, li a little bit. So, Mm -hmm. So I have to find the right one because I always ask them for everything. When I when I'm I ride a motorcycle, when I'm riding down the street on my motorcycle, and if I see I go, okay, I gotta take a right turn, and they go, No, I go, Oh, okay. Want me to take the next right turn? Yes, okay. And the reason being why they don't want me to take that, I don't ask. I just know that, that they're looking out for my best interest. But I'm able to do that because you know. When I'm riding my motorcycle, I get in that zone. You know, I get in that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a meditation for me as well. Uh, except the only problem is I poke out for squirrels and cars, you know. But uh, yeah, because of, oh man, they like to run for any. But uh, except over here in Arizona, we have these things called javelinas. It looks like a miniature pig, except they're mean. And we have coyotes 
and mountain lions and uh, rattler snakes and all kinds of tarantulas. Oh boy. So, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, you got to watch out. But yeah, I'm in, I'm in that zone. So that's what I want to be with in that uh, in the meditation in that zone. Uh, uh, but to get in that zone, uh, it took a long time for me to train myself for that. So, yes. and th so that's what you're doing for everyone else is you're training them to be able to get into that zone th themselves. Absolutely. But it's not one and done, like you were saying. Right. This, right. this is a, a practice all the time. I like to give the example of if you're learning anything, a new language, an instrument, right. anything new, you, there's a practice to it. There's a practice to get better. There's a practice to, you know, get more peaceful. And in 2019, I started to take guitar lessons. And my uh, instructor said, I just, I just want five minutes every day, just five minutes every day. And then we'll carry on more as, as the weeks go by, it'll become, and if you can do 10, that's great. If you can do 15, that's great. But all I'm asking of you is five minutes, uh, five minutes practicing on your guitar. And so when I'm working with students that are clients that are beginners, I say the same thing. I'm like, I'm not asking for 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the night. Right. You know, to start your day and to end your day. You know, you can do two minutes. You can do five minutes. And that sounds much more doable than if I were to say 30 minutes or 20 minutes. That just seems yeah. like a lot. It does. And that can like scare people away and say, no way, man, you know, you want this. A, I don't even have the time for that. And that's way too long. So it's like a baby step. Sure. But I also make sure to say, if you do that two minutes and you're like, I could have definitely done three because that felt so good. Please do it. Do three, do more. But if you're doing two and two works for you, stick with that. And then maybe yeah. the next week, try three. And if three is still too much, go back to two. It's all good. Yeah, whenever I meditate uh, now, uh, like I was talking to some people yesterday, I, I don't go in anymore now for like a set time. I just go in and whatever happens, happens. Sometimes I walk out a half hour later. There have been times I walked out and it was two hours later because you just, there's, I, I don't want to say you get caught in the moment. But when you're just in it and things are just happening, where in that type of space, uh, especially with spirit, there is no space and time. So when there's no mm -hmm. space and time, there's no, you're not looking at the clock to go, oh, I got two minutes left or anything like that. You're just, you're going with what is going on. And sometimes it, it's short and sometimes it's long, but I don't set a time limit because time time is just gonna, is going to restrain or or yeah, restrain me from something that may happen in that whole entire moment. And if I if I, if I just go, okay, I'm going to cut my, myself off, I, I just wait until, because sometimes things happen, or eventually I just fall asleep. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but, and then, then I woke up and I'm like, oh. Uh, but sometimes I have things where it happen, I meditate, then what happens after I fall asleep, I wake up. And when I wake up, I see all kinds of stuff because I'm still in that just kind of waking up mode. And then the, I see all kinds more stuff. But so you're not going to, again, you're not going to find out unless you uh, try it for yourself and eventually get to the point where you're not limiting yourself and you're just letting the moment be. Don't ask or don't go into meditation thinking like you're going to go somewhere. What you need to do is just, you just need to be. Mm -hmm. Very simple. When you are a, a human being and you leave your body and, and you, you move on to the next place, you just, uh, they just continue to go. They just, they just are. That's it. There is no, well, a, a hundred years from now, it's not about that. It's you just are a being at that point. And uh, you've let go of all your crap. And that's what you're trying to do within meditation, right? Cause you're letting mm -hmm. go of all your crap getting freeing up the 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 uh the uh, uh your basically little uh uh little little machine here of, of all the mess that's going on in there and getting it out so you can get 
uh, so you can basically clear up your life. Yeah, I like to give the example of somebody shaking a snow globe. So you have all the little pieces of snow, which are all of our thoughts, and it's shaking and shaking, and there's a hundred thoughts or more just spinning, spinning, flowing in My that snow, snow globe. globe. Snow globe, yeah. same thing, our head, the snow globe. So you can picture the snow globe. So what happens when I put the snow globe down? What happens when I sit? So I put, that's I sit that snow globe down, and all the little snows fall to the ground, and we have like you said, empty, 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 and everything calms down. All the thoughts calm down to the bottom. And that's when we have that space or that emptiness or that openness for also really, really brilliant ideas to arise. And yeah. sometimes I tell people, it's okay to have a pen and a paper next to where you are meditating. Yeah, write it down. J journal that stuff. Journal it you know, and then go and then come back into the meditation. And so, so many people have never really experienced that, that when they experience, it's like, whoa, it's, it's the, it's the drug without the side effects. Yeah. You, you, and when, you, <laughs> when you write it all down, eventually at some point, all of everything you wrote down is going to make sense. Yes. And then you're going to know once it makes sense, I got to continue to do this because I like what happened here. But you were, you were saying, you know, for you, you don't have to time it. Majority uh, of people that I know have all these different things going on in their life. And I just want them to give a certain amount of time. Sure. Dedicated to meditation. Yeah, well, for so beginners. They may have to time it. They may have to set a little timer. Yeah, on beginner their stuff. Watch sure. or their phone or... There's even an app that will time your meditations for you with a bell at the beginning and a bell. Oh, at the yeah, the, the, the ding. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, because I don't want the excuse of I don't have enough time, which right. is, well, do you have 60 seconds? Everybody has 60 seconds. So there's no excuse of I don't have enough time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I, I meant for me, in, in the very yeah. beginning, I was doing the same thing where I would say, okay, I'll go in for a few minutes here and I'll go in for a few minutes there just to try to, you know, almost in the very beginning, make myself do that. Okay, I got to set a, a, some time to do this. Uh, and that would just like, like, like I said with the trainer, you're, you're setting yourself some time, uh, but I didn't have a trainer. There. It was just me. But now I just, I, I'll say to my wife, got to go in and meditate. She goes, okay. And that's it. I just, I don't say I'll be out in a half an hour and then, and then I'll come out. She was like, that really must have went well. And I was like, why? She's like, well, you went in at eight o'clock. It's now 10 o'clock. And I was like, what? <laughs> Where did that go? I mean, and she said, what did you get? And then I saw, as soon as I tell her, she's like, go write it down. Go write it down because it's going to make sense somewhere. And I said, so that's what I do. But uh, yeah, for, for for beginners, absolutely. Yeah, they should just set an amount of time. This is what I'm going to try to do. And it's not about trying to get through it. It's about just trying to do it. Mm -hmm. yes, right? Um, absolutely. But, but we still have that idea of time. Like yeah. you have to do this for this long? So to say two minutes, five minutes, that feels much more, you know, in a time sense, more doable yeah. when yeah, you're a for, beginner and you're not used to this. For regular people, the only reason we experience time whatsoever is because we go to work. Because if we didn't have a work week to go to, uh, I mean, we pay attention to the sunset and the sunrise, the body mm -hmm. does have to rest, but there are people who work a second shift, so they're their life is completely different. It's just, it's all about work, 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 you know? And that's why we have set times because you go, oh, I got to get to work or I got to go to lunch or something like that. Here's a, a scenario for you. So I'm about to, I joined, uh, my wife and I joined a group uh, that has to do with a guy uh, named Stephen Greer and it's called CE5. And that group, what they do is they go out in places in the desert or just an open area. They sit in chairs and they do a group meditation. 
And within that group meditation, what they're trying to do is they are inviting not just spiritual, but we as uh, people, uh, beings from other worlds. And so what they do is they are inviting that in and hopefully trying to make contact from, from beings with a higher consciousness. And so I'm going to do that Saturday night down here. Uh, we, we just met four people yesterday. And uh, so we're going to do that. Um, hopefully not get eaten by a mountain lion. But that's okay. <laughs> when I meditate, as soon as I close my eyes, I just start seeing the things that I normally see. And that's just spirit everywhere. My guides, I see their eyes. They start talking to me and stuff like that. I have to figure out a way to not have that come in so I can allow these other experiences to happen. Is there a way to, to do them. that? Tell them, hey, leave me yeah, to hell alone. Just say, just say not right now. You know, you, could, you, you talk to them like they're people, like you're talking to me. And so you can, you can, like you said, you've, you've asked them to come in and give yeah. you guidance. So you can ask them to go away. Back off, bitches. And okay. have another yeah. uh, experience. I didn't even think of that. And now that you're saying it, I guess that's the way I should do it. Because, uh, because I've been doing it for so long in this manner and the way that things happen. That's just what I'm used to. Uh, now I have to figure out a way to break that cycle. Uh, because I tell people when I do this, they say, well, do you just wait for something? I say, no, sometimes I will, before I meditate, I will say out loud to my guides or to whatever is around me, is there anything that you want me to see, hear, feel, or know, or ask for something specific? I need some guidance for tomorrow. I have something to do. Can you bring that to me now and then go into meditation? Do you ever tell people that, or do you just let whatever happens happen? Because... Because I, I, everybody's having their own experience, right? So, I, I have all the all these different clients come in, and they're all sharing such a different experience that I just let them go with whatever it is. Some people, when the meditation comes to an end, they're like, "I wasn't here. I know I left and went somewhere and then came back." I'm like, "Oh, that's great." Some people say, "I couldn't feel. My body was so relaxed, I couldn't feel it," or Oh my gosh, was I snoring? I think uh, I was yeah, that happened. time. <laughs> so you get so many different experiences from so many different people that you just can't um, generalize it and say, well, like this, it's going to be like this. I just let them be and let them have it. And at the end, I say, if you want to share this with me, great. If you just want to say thank you and, and carry on, that's great too. Uh, the people who want to share... I love it when they do. It's always something different. No two people have the same exact experience after a class or meditating or, or whatever we're doing together. When they are snoring, do you ever have to get up and walk over and smack them on the head and say, hey, you're snoring? No. I, I, that's part of letting it be. You should try Let, that. Letting it be <laughs> is... You know, if that's their experience, that's their experience. And um, I often, when people say, I think I fell asleep, I'm like, well, that just goes to show why meditation is good for insomnia. Right. If you're going to go in with the intention of this is going to be a sleep meditation or what we like to say, sleepitation, then go in with the intention of turn off the lights, get in your bed pull up the covers, get comfy and cozy, close your eyes and do your meditation for the intent of I'm going to fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah. I tell people that same thing when they say, oh, I have trouble sleeping. I say either meditate during as you're about to go to sleep or meditate before, because when you clear your mind out, then all mm -hmm. that, that racing you had for a hundred miles an hour will go away, which will enable you to have uh, at least be able to fall asleep and or have better sleep. So yeah. If you could, please tell me and tell my audience uh, where you can be reached, uh, your websites, your, uh, your, your social media links, uh, all that stuff. Where can they find you? My business is meditating. And then the next word is mama. And you spell mama, M-A-M-A. -M -A. So the website is all one word, meditatingmama.me. 
like M-E. So it's not .com. A lot of people are so used to typing in .com after Me something. Too. Everything. So it's meditatingmama.me. And then if you go on to Facebook, you just type in two words, Meditating Mama. You'll see my, um, my profile picture is me meditating on a stand-up paddleboard in the water. So that's another activity that I like to do. What's that all about? Oh, stand-up paddleboarding. So here in San Diego, we're surrounded by water. We have ocean, we have bays, we have all the water that you need. A paddleboard is like a super large surfboard that's really wide and really long, so you can stand on it. And then you have a paddle. You're like a gondola man, except for you're on a board instead of a boat, and you just stand on it and you just paddle. And it, it's a nice exercise. It gets you out in the water. Everything here is so beautiful. We have the beautiful views around the water. Um, you can go into the ocean with it. We've we've gone into the ocean and when it's on a clear day and seen sharks and sea life. But but yeah, I was gonna say, what about the sharks? I mean, if I saw a shark, I'd be like, oh shit. So, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. the sharks that we normally will get here in the shallows are called leopard sharks, and they're more afraid of us than we are of them. In all the studies that have been done, they're not interested in uh, flesh and blood. They want to, they're bottom feeders. They want to get the little krill and whatever's living on the bottom of the ocean. Uh, I've been called that before in my life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, I'm a bottom feeder. I'm looking at you. I'm pretty interested. So, you know, I'm sure that shark would go, mm, that looks pretty good. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. I mean, come on. Well, I've, I have video of me, be, you know, walking, standing in the water about waist deep as surrounded by these leopard sharks. And they have no interest in me as I'm Good getting close Lord, to them. They're yeah. getting away from me. They're they're more afraid. They're afraid of us. They're afraid really? of us. And they're not afraid like they want to attack us. They're afraid like I'm out of here. So you stand on there and and meditate as well. I mean, don't you worry about losing? Oh, that yourself? was that mm. was just um, we were doing we were doing photos and it was a photo shoot and it was for fun and I said you know I'm going to sit on my board. And be in the typical lotus with my hands sure. on my knees position here out in the water where it's already so very peaceful. Did, did the waves and, knock you off the board or were you okay? Oh, uh, we were in a bay. Oh, so okay. the bays are, are, are flat and calm. So is there any any other places that uh, they can find you uh, beyond, beyond uh, um, you know, I would I would say your house in their car in San Diego and uh, and I'm in accident. I'm in San Diego. Yeah. And uh, so if people, you know, this is, we, we are in a vacation town. Everybody likes to come here for their vacation. So if you're here on vacation, if you just happen to live here, um, get my website, get, you know, you can email me through my website. You can call me or text me through my website. Yeah, why not? If you're not sure how to do website and you're familiar with Google, you can go to Google and type in Meditating Mama. And it'll open up all my social medias, my email, my Google business page. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm I'm on Yelp. So as long as they put in med meditating mama, they're gonna find you. Yes. I'm glad I got to have you on my show today. I uh, listening to I'm gonna have to listen to this show again myself because of all the information that you you put out there. Uh, I'm I'm glad that you were able to do that because. Thank you. Uh, because it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, when yeah. someone when you when someone says to me, oh, I've been practicing, I I went to a teacher for 17 years. I'm like, holy crap, is there is there is there much more to this than it seems? And although it's there's not, but it's just it's just feeling that uh doing that regiment of of saying, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, and this is when I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna stick to it. And that's what people I believe I think they have to learn with meditation. It's about, you know, like you said, you can't just go ahead and go, okay, I'm going to be one of those people who does it once a month. Right. If you really want that that true clarity that you need in your life uh, to get rid of all that mess in your life, then this is something you're going to have to put some time in with. But like you said, it doesn't need to be 30 minutes. If you, mm -mm. If you can get them to go a couple of minutes a day, 
they will figure out after a while that right. doing it for a couple minutes a day, they're going to want to do it more than just a couple minutes a day. And like maybe get to the point where like with me, when I walk in, I don't set a time limit. I just go in and I have enough time to go in and just go, okay, I'll just, when it happens, what happens and that's it. Yeah. But like I said before, I mean, I was really young when I started with my teacher. I mean, I was, I was inexperienced. I was immature. I hadn't lived very much, uh, you know, life. How old so, are you now? Is it okay if I ask? Oh, I'm 47. So holy shit, look at you. You look fantastic. So, <laughs> so everybody out there who's listening or watching this, uh, she she looks fantastic. Thank you. And uh, you can <laughs> med meditate your ass off and end up looking uh, pretty darn good because, you know, uh, you're, you're, yeah, yeah, I'm 55 and I look like I'm 90, but still, <laughs> uh, but, uh, I got miles on me. I got some shit fucked up, but I try to meditate as much as I can, uh, a couple of times a week, uh, because it, it, it really does. It makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. So, so if you can get that out of it, why not? Why not? If you only have to do it for a short time. And it's also to remember that you don't want to wait until you're feeling out of balance, right. you're feeling, having a tough day to do it. Be Just proactive. do it. Right. Be you proactive. Know, do it all the time. Yeah. Go out and do it beforehand, and then it'll maybe those feelings that you, you had before in your life that, oh, this is horrible. Maybe when you learn how to do this, those tasks that you take on won't be mm -hmm. so horrible because you will realize, eh, it ain't as bad as I thought it was. Exactly. Good. And and even as a seasoned meditator, there are days when I'm just like, this is not what I want to do. But right. then I sit and I do it. And I'm so glad I did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I I say the same thing. When I, when I get done, it's like, you know, I'm so relaxed now. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I took the time out to do that. But it is hard sometimes within our days to to push ourselves to do something. Mm -hmm. I always feel very satisfied and I'm I'm absolutely uh I feel much better when I do it. Uh and like you said, it it's the drug that you don't really have to take. Uh, mm -hmm. and, but you There's get no side but, effect. <laughs> right. You, you still get that euphoric feeling from it. If that's what's uh what you're going for. Uh, then why not, you know, just go out there and give it a shot. And uh, you got to put time into it. You can't just do it once. And because I tell them all the time, you know, when, when I talk to people, you may not get a message the first time. You may not get that feeling the first time, but you're going to do it and do it and do it. Because uh, spirit wants to, when they want to give you messages, they want to be able to trust that they're, they're giving you the messages uh, for the right reasons. Not just because you want to get messages so you can tell your friends, oh, I got a message from your spirit. Yeah, uh, it's not all about that. It's about it's about your your inner peace is what it's about. And uh, if you want some inner peace, this is the way to go. But you have to put some time into it. You have to make time to do it. Correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Brittany, it was good to have you on here. Yes, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, meditating Mama. And look her up in that way and you'll find something out about her that will help you to get uh to find your inner peace as well so i'm like i said glad to have you on the show uh you are an awesome guest you put out a lot of information everybody uh i'm i i'm, I'm glad you showed up to uh, listen to the show today thank you for coming to check out the beyond the veil with daniel jackson me and as i tell everybody please have a great day and uh be good and don't do any stupid shit have a great day. There you go. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you. This was Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson. Subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss an episode. And we'll see you next time, Beyond the Veil. Thanks for watching.